Another great application of analog heat is using it as a master effect. With all the different distortion circuits, there's a lot of different ways you can tailor your sound. Having the analog EQ, the analog filter, again, it's just a ton of different ways to shape your sound. So, I'm gonna drop analog heat on my master, and we're gonna do some sound shaping to the overall mix, and make this a little bit fatter, a little bit warmer, and uh, give it the analog grit that it's missing. So, let me go ahead and play part of the beat right now. Now, I've initialized the preset on analog heat, so right now, essentially, it's being bypassed. Just so we can confirm that, if I make it inactive, that's heat bypassed. Active, there we have it. Now right now I have a clean boost setting. This is really tailor-made for using analog heat on your master, but again, depending on what sound you're going for, the other distortion circuits might be more to your liking. What I want to do right now, I'm going to add a bit of drive here. And already I can hear that it's just sounding nice and fat, a little bit warmer. I had a little bit of dirt, because I like the way that dirt kind of brings out certain harmonics. And I want to use the equalizer and the filter, uh, essentially you can kind of combine these as a three-band EQ. I have my low and my high here for the EQ, and then I can use this peak filter to give me a third band uh, that I can basically put anywhere in the mids. So first, let me go ahead and add a little bit of lows here. I want to be careful, I don't want to overload the output. So what I want to do here is bring down the level of the preset volume. And we set the peak meters here. Okay, we're doing all right so far. I'm going to add a little bit to the highs. Make this relatively subtle. And now going to my filter, I'll use the peak filter here. We add a little bit of resonance. And adjust the frequency. I'm going to find a nice sweet spot in the middle here. As I sweep through, you can hear the effect of this. So again, the goal is doing something that's relatively subtle to enhance the mix. And if we do an A-B comparison right now, that's bypassing heat. So again, you can hear, we're not going for distortion, we're just boosting it, giving some, uh, some nice, nice fat warmth. Now what I can also do is I can use the envelope follower here to kind of simulate some sort of compression. What I'm gonna do is bring down the trigger level so that just the kicks and the snares, the loudest transients are going above the trigger level. And I can assign this to, let's say, the drive. And I'll make it so that every time the loudest volume goes over the threshold, the drive gets reduced. Let's hear the effect of that. Okay, that's interesting. Now I think trying this with a different distortion circuit that's a bit more extreme will kind of give us a more obvious example of why this is useful. So let's try maybe, let's go for the saturation circuit. Now you can kind of get a better sense of the sort of pumping sound that we're getting. If I want, I can increase the gain for the input of the envelope. Give you a little bit more room to work with. Now right now, this is 100% wet. It's a bit extreme if I'm going to be using this for my master. So I think I want to blend this. Do some parallel processing here. And now I can increase the preset volume to make it for what I've lost. Okay. So again, let's do an AV comparison so we can hear what we've gotten to. That's where we started from. Nice. And if we look at the drive knob right here, we can see how the envelope is affected. Now let's say at this point, I like this and I want to render this. Keep in mind analog heat, it is an analog device, so offline rendering is not possible. Well, I shouldn't say it's not possible. Your results probably won't be what you intend. Uh, but you can try it out. You might get some interesting results for some sound design kind of stuff, nice glitchy sort of output. But realistically, if we want to render this, we have to do it in real time. Now if your DAW doesn't let you render in real time, you can simply resample the output. And that's what we're going to do here. So let me go ahead and hide the GUI, collapse this group track, and I have an audio track here that's not being used. I'm just going to make it so that we resample everything. So resampling's been chosen, my monitor is off. I can arm this, and let me go to my arrangement view here. We're ready, and I will start recording this. And there we go. We record this in real time. Let me turn off my loop. 
Once this is done, I can just export this file and I've got my heated master ready to go.